Hello, welcome to Secure the Continent, New Central Television. This is the program where we bring you up to speed with all the security happenings on the African continent. I am Benga Aborowa. But before we delve into a major discussion for this evening, let me first bring you the latest security headlines. Gunmen released 23 remaining hostages of Abuja Kaduna train attack in Nigeria. In East Africa, Ethiopia's Tigray rebels accept African Union call for peace talks in South Africa. A bomb blast kills three United Nations peacekeepers in the Central African Republic. And finally, Ugandan president fires son from the military after tweets about invading Kenya. Don't go anywhere, I will be right back. Today on Secure the Continent, we bring you the latest developments from Burkina Faso, where troops led by Captain Ibrahim Traore have ousted the military government headed by Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandaogo Damiba. In addition to disagreements over what should partner, what country should partner Burkina Faso in its fight against terrorism, the coup leaders accused Damiba of pursuing his own political interest and failing to deal with the nation's deteriorating security situation after accepting a conditional resignation offered by Damiba to avoid further violence, Traoré announced that he would continue to act as president until a transitional civilian or military president is designated in the coming weeks. We have more details for you in this package. For a second time in only nine months, Burkina Faso has been at the center of another coup. This coup is a counter-coup against the one that was carried out in January by Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandogo Damiba. Many have denounced this latest coup, while there is some hope that Burkina Faso can come back from the consequences of the coup. Burkina Faso's situation is not the same as that of Mali, much less of Guinea. There are certain nuances, context and peculiarities that must be considered while searching for a way out of the governance logjam. Ousted Colonel Demiba had vowed to make security a top priority. However, violence continued, causing heavy casualties to civilians and the military. The ECOWAS mediator in Burkina Faso, Mohamedou Isofo, met with the country's new military leader, Ibrahim Traore, and has said he is satisfied. Isofo has said that the 15 member bloc would continue to support Burkina Faso's transition to constitutional rule. 2 million Burkina Bay are still internally displaced, while others are trapped in communities controlled by terrorists. Now, joining me tonight and secure the continent to discuss all of this and more is Koalaga Omaru Paul, an expert in terrorism, extremism and community violence. He is also a trained diplomat and executive director of Institute de Strategie et de Relations International in Burkina Faso. I also have Dr. Lassan Wadarago, a political analyst and lecturer at the University Joseph Kirzerbo. He joins in live from the Burkina Bay capital, Ouagadougou. A warm welcome to you gentlemen and thanks for joining me on the program. Thank you for having us. Uh, I would like to start with Dr. Wadarago. What's the reason behind this second coup in Burkina Faso in less than nine months uh, where did Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba get it wrong? And why are his own soldiers turning against him? Why did they turn against him? I think uh, there was an agreement between soldiers back in January that Burkina was on the path to a very, very difficult uh, situation um, pertaining to the insecurity, which is growing and still growing. And uh, what led to the coup in the first place back in January was uh, how to actually fight and secure the country. But the new uh, coup was staged because leaders of this coup believed that uh, President Damiba um, was not interested in that initial agreement among militaries. Uh, Damiba was instead uh, busy doing politics. So he is blamed for that. That's the primary uh, motivation 
um, by the young officers to come back to the capital city and claim back power. Now, were there any casualties in this coup? Was it a bloodless coup? And uh, what's the current whereabouts of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba as we speak? Colonel Damiba is presently in the capital of uh, Togo, ne neighbor, neighboring Togo. And uh, as far as uh, the, the outcome of the coup itself, we did not uh, have any report of casualty. And actually, there was fears by Friday morning that there was going to be a lot of confrontations between the men of Damiba and the men of Traore. And fortunately, we did not see that happen. Uh, so it's, there has not been any reports of uh, casualties during this coup. So I guess that's some good news there. Now, Dr. Wadrago, angry demonstrators in Burkina Faso in the wake of this coup attacked the French embassy in the capital, Ouagadougou, on Saturday, the 1st of October. What was the reason behind these attacks on French uh, diplomatic institutions? In the earlier hours of the coup, uh, Damiba was not arrested by the men of Traore. Damiba uh, was reportedly hiding in a military base that belong, uh, that was adjacent to a French military base. And uh, Traore and his men in the second communique on national television asserted that uh, Damiba is organizing a counter coup. Uh, and that he's being aided by France. So, and on the spot, they suspended um, the curfew, they lifted the curfew and asked, made a call to the people of Ouagadougou to come in support of them. And spontaneously, people went on the street to uh, support coup leaders. And in doing so, uh, most of them headed directly to the French embassy to protest this received the idea that uh, the French were still behind Damiba and that uh, the French were going to support Damiba and fight back. So that was primarily the reason why, uh, the immediate reason why Burkina Bay, uh, most of the young, mostly young people went to the French embassy sure. in Ouagadougou, but also the French cultural center in Bobo Julasso. Now, this is the second coup that will be happening in Burkina Faso in less than uh, uh, nine months. What are the regional and international ramifications of this coup? What does it mean for Burkina Faso and security in the Sahel and the West African sub-region? Well, definitely, this is a setback for us. But the hope is that uh, from this second coup, we will not have a coup again. Um, the implications are huge because Burkina is involved in a lot of uh, bilateral, uh, multilateral cooperation in the fight against jihadist um, incursion in the country. I'm thinking of G5 Sahel. I'm also thinking about uh, Burkina Bay, uh, the Burkina's cooperation with France and the United States mm -hmm. and ECOWAS in the middle of all of that. So the implication here is that the new leaders at least in uh, the communication and their messages are uh, asserting that uh, Burkina needs to diversify its partnerships in the fight against jihadism. And, and we have seen uh, the flags of Russia here and there, um, but honestly, I think that this is just a strategy to rally the Burkina Bay behind the coup, or else um, the young officers know better that uh, 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 Russia would not be um, a viable option here. It, they have not clearly stated that we're going we're, we're gonna to collaborate with, uh, um, with Wagner, we're going to bring in Wagner. The talks about uh, diversifying um, our military partners is all about how can we get weapons. I think we are, we are at that level yet. We have not reached to the point where we have to invite in mm. mercenaries from Russia. Um, contrarily to what uh, international media are often reporting, we have not seen something concretely stated that uh, Burkina Faso is going to align with Russia. It's all about uh, diversifying the military um, uh, cooperation, uh, collaboration. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Odorago. I would like to bring in our second guest also from Ouagadougou, Kualaga Omaru Paul, is an expert on terrorism, extremism, and community uh, violence. One welcome to you, Kualaga, and thanks for joining us. Now, Kualaga, during uh, his earlier submission, uh, Dr. Uh, Wadarago did say that, you know, Burkina Faso is used, is looking to diversify its security and military options in terms of partnerships. Now, the coup leader, uh, Captain Ibrahim Traore, uh, said he's ready to work and explore other partnerships, not just with France. What do you make of this statement? Hello, Kualaga, can you hear us? I, I believe we have some connection issues with Kualaga. We'll try and get back to him uh, shortly. Uh, Dr. Wadarago, I would like to direct that question to you. You did talk about uh, security partnerships, explain other partnerships. But we saw what happened in Mali. Uh, the French led because they said their philosophy is not compatible with having Russian presence. Uh, the Wagner Group, to be specific, in Mali. And now you have a military leader in Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traore, saying he's ready to work and explore other partnerships. Other partnerships could mean the United States or Russia and, uh, the, and also uh, France. So do you think the French will be happy or will they want to belong to this sort of arrangement? What do you make of this? Oh, definitely. Um, France and uh, its close partners definitely do not approve of uh, this talk about diversifying our military uh, partnerships, especially when it's all about Russia. But um, uh, what is going on here is that the military or the leadership of Burkina Faso has their back against the wall. As we speak, we do not control at least 40% of our national territory. And those are the, the official um, data. Uh, it could be more than that. Um, and if you think about uh, the two major cities of Burkina Faso, the capital city, Ouagadougou, and uh, the second uh, economic city, to the, to the, to the west, uh, the, the road, the national, uh, the major national road that connects these two cities is quite um, very dangerous, have become quite very dangerous. So it goes on to say that right now the situation is extremely dire that uh, any person in a leadership position would not um, want to sit idle and uh, uh, go on uh, with its um, uh, traditional partners, especially when you do not see some results on the ground. Mm. So, um, and uh, the military understand quite well that to have a popular support, we need to inject these kind of discourses, the discourse whereby we, uh, uh, we, we are taunting, um, toying with this idea of uh, going extremely um, to the other side of the spectrum, collaborating with Russia or reaching out to Russia for military aid, for that matter. So, but honestly, I do believe that Captain Traore and his men have a, a good understanding of, a, of a, this whole regional implications of the Russian presence because they were with uh, Colonel Damiba. When they did a coup, uh, they were with Damiba. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did not urge him to quickly go and sign up some treaties with Russia. So I do not expect that to happen in the coming weeks or the coming days. I do not expect Burkina Faso to fall uh, with, uh, in, in a quick partnership with Russia the way it's happening in Mali. Because in Burkina Faso, we do have strong civil society organizations who, uh, whose um, uh, word actually still means something in uh, the political uh, arena. And uh, they will not sit ad idle and let uh, whoever is in command to just tie any um, risky relationship. But what we need to understand is that we really have our back against the wall and anything that is promising in terms of securing the country, they will not hesitate to do that. Okay, that, uh, which includes uh, looking at all the partnerships. And uh, 
Corporation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wadraga. I'd like to bring back uh, Kualaga. Kualaga, are you there? Yep. Okay, now, Kualaga, we've seen rising French, growing anti French sentiment, not just in Mali, uh, in Burkina Faso, and of course in the West Africa sub region. Do you see the French relationship uh, with Burkina Faso deteriorating to a level where ties are severed, uh, like what happened in Mali? What's, what's, your, what's your take on the French and Burkina Bay uh, relationship following this coup? And how do you see it developing in the next few weeks? Okay, let's say this is a that, you know, most of the people here, uh, but when we do, you know, have the not think that from a certain moment, it's sort of, you know, think that they're rejecting, I mean, a uh, uh, trust, and this is happening for a long time. This is uh, mainly due to, you know, the same uh, geopolitics uh, issue, but I do not think it's a uh, uh, you know, professor, uh, so, I do not believe that already needs to, uh, to go to Russia because we have already, you know, let's say classical cooperation with I mean, this country. But now, what people are, let's say, you know, expecting from it is they are not clearly saying it, it is to go to, let's say, Wagner, which is um, a private, you know, entity. And even, I mean, the Malian officials, so far, they have not admitted that they are working with, I mean, this uh, private, you know, entity. Uh, what maybe can uh, uh, happen, uh, we will maybe try to reinforce maybe uh, the collaboration with Russia, things that we're already doing because, you know, the military are trained by Russia, you know, and um, weapons that we have generally are from Russia. From the majority, when they say Kalashnikov, we know that this is from, uh, let's say, uh, Russia. But you know, the military agenda, what they do, what they did this, you know, uh, last days, uh, knowing that the youth, particularly, are claiming from Russia, then they use that like um, just, let's say, to you know, uh, succeed in uh, chasing, or we say like this, I mean, uh, uh, Damiba. But now that they have, I mean, the power. Yeah, they now <laughs> realize that things cannot be done as you know uh, these people are wishing and expecting. And I think the coming weeks they will experience. I mean, the situation in the ground. Yeah, because uh, maybe there are some realities that they are not aware of. But they have just used. I mean, uh, the calling for let's say youth. You know, saying that you know French people were protecting uh, former President Damiba. And then they have also decided, because they have decided to diversify, I mean, uh, uh, let's say the partnership, just to, you know, to have you know, the support of I mean, the majority of people, and especially you. But the reality is, uh, is totally different. We keep you know, having uh, the same relationship uh, with France, because uh, apart from security issues, we used to have you know, others uh, partnership dealing with uh, development and other issues, and I'm not, I don't think that Russia, apart from let's say selling, I mean weapons and uh, training, I mean um, the troops uh, can you know engage in these um, projects, you know, for Burkina Faso. So, but I need you know just to tell the truth. If uh, not, if they do not do that, uh, I think the same youth can also be, you know, a threat for them. Thank you, Kualaga. Uh, now back to you, Dr. Odrago. We didn't only see demonstrations against France. Uh, the Burkina Faso, but Burkina Bay youths are also protesting against ECOWAS. If you didn't notice a signboard that was raised there, it says, non a la CDAO with uh, ex mac That means they don't want ECOWAS there. We saw this protest when the former president of Niger, Mamoudou Isufu, paid a visit to the new uh, head of the junta, Captain Ibrahim Traoré. What's the grouse with ECOWAS? Why are they angry with ECOWAS, uh, Dr. Wadrago? Well, in the recent history of Burkina Faso, ECOWAS has not been 
um, did not live to the expectations of the people. ECOWAS has remained, and this is a major criticism uh, that is transpiring from youths and youth organizations in Burkina Faso. ECOWAS has remained an ECOWAS of leadership, an ECOWAS of uh, uh, head of states. ECOWAS has not been able to create the ECOWAS of the people where uh, in, on the ground you see uh, uh, that the circulation of goods and services is free and, 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 uh, and easily done. So in the past we've seen, uh, especially in, back in 2015, when General uh, Jinjeri did a coup, staged a coup against the transitional government, ECOWAS was not quick to condemn that. And the ECOWAS actually came down to Burkina Faso to negotiate some sort of a, you know, a treaty to allow the general to, to move on. And Burkina Faso did not appreciate that. And uh, another thing that ECOWAS did that resonated wrong here in Burkina Faso was when uh, President um, uh, Alassane Ouattara from Cote d'Ivoire um, modified the Ivorian constitution to run for a third, third term. term. And in Burkina, the youth are very woke. They watch what is happening. They, they follow things closely. And uh, the punishment that ECOWAS has staged against Mali uh, following the coup were not also appreciated here because the Malian regime, a military regime, is perceived as a regime that is actually very sankarist, very uh, 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 against imperialism and so on. So that kind of discourse resonates here well in Burkina Faso. So when ECOWAS announced its arrival, the first thing that we saw during the protests against ECOWAS uh, were signs that were actually uh, warning ECOWAS that if you are here to hear the voice of the people and stand with the youth and the people of Burkina Faso in support of this coup, then you're welcome. But if you're going to come here and seek to reverse the course of action, mm -hmm. then uh, we will be on your path. Mm. So actually, following the meeting between ECOWAS and uh, uh, Captain Traore and his men, I have seen a lot of people in the street actually cheering ECOWAS as they were headed back to the airport. So there was no so, so negative it, it means ECOWAS is learning uh, to be in tune with the people and listening to the pulse on the ground rather than them just exactly. dictating uh, what their, their, their wills and what they want in these countries. Exactly. So this was just a, you know, um, a sign to tell ECOWAS that if ECOWAS do not live to the expectations of the people on the ground here, if ECOWAS is going to stick to its uh, book uh, by condemning coups and, uh, you know, uh, locking down the country and, you know, then uh, with harsh sanctions, then uh, we would not appreciate ECOWAS. And, uh, but if it's an ECOWAS that is willing to listen to the coup leaders, if it's an ECOWAS that is willing to listen to religious leaders, to youth leaders, civil society organization leaders, and together discuss about why did the coup happen in the first place and what is the agenda of the coup leaders, then there won't be any issue. And I think uh, that Ibrahim uh, uh, Traore and his men have made it clear from onset that they do not have any intention of uh, rejecting any agreement that was set forth by uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Damiba and uh, and uh, ECOWAS. The only thing that uh, the, 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 they wouldn't tolerate is if ECOWAS was to come here and say, okay, you guys did the coup, therefore we're going to block everything, yes. you're not going to be able to, 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 to go into other countries, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, let me bring in Kolaga. Now, Kolaga, during the uh, Sankara and um, to a certain extent, Blaise Campari, yes, for almost three decades, uh, we didn't hear anything about violence, extremism uh, in, the, in Burkina Faso. Can you give us a context and a background to how we got here in the first place, where we've seen two coups in less than a year, and uh, from being spared 
most of the jihadist attacks in the Sahel, but Burkina Faso today is the epicenter in less than a decade. How did the army fail to provide security for Burkinabes? What went wrong? Yeah, but maybe uh, before answering to this question, I would like just, uh, if you can allow me, uh, to say something uh, very quick about, uh, you know, a cause. In, please go ahead. You know, go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, let's uh, marry the general leave. Um, what people are expecting from ECOWAS, sometimes it is because uh, uh, they are not well informed really what uh, is, I mean, the, the mandate, you know, of, I mean, uh, ECOWAS. And there is, um, as I said it in my first intervention, you know, uh, too much, let's say, you know, uh, things that are said on ECOWAS that is not always true. You know, generally, when there is, I mean, a sort of coup cool, about what's happening in Burkina, in Mali, and in uh, Guinea, generally, uh, ECOWAS is not very, let's say, uh, starting by, let's say, putting sanction in the country. Uh, the first thing you have to know that what they are doing is just to, you know, go to the authorities, the new authorities, like what they did, you know, two or three days ago with uh, Captain Torre. Mm -hmm. And um, the mission is just to, you know, clarify things. Because once you've done a coup, you know, then you have broken, you know, I mean, one of the main uh, rules that, you know, uh, is assigned to the, the organization. You are not part of, you know, of, I mean, uh, you are not uh, aligned to, let's say, democratic uh, issues, I mean, and the rules. And then uh, they're offering to, you know, help you just to come back very quickly, you know, in the organization because... The first thing you are uh, imposed by, I mean, um, ECOWAS is political shifts and doctrine. So that today, a uh, uh, is always and uh, already uh, sanctioned politically. Now, if the authorities, you know, are aligned to what, you know, ECOWAS is asking, um, it is normally uh, to respect, you know, um, what have been decided with, I mean, the okay. authorities, uh, the former authorities, the members, yeah. Okay. Yes. And, now, uh, now, now to the question of how. After comes, yeah. Now to the question yeah. of how we got here. How did Burkina Faso go from being spared a lot of these jihadist attacks to being the epicenter of of, of jihadist extremism in the Sahel in in less than a decade? Things weren't always like this. What yeah, went wrong? Uh, yeah. Let's say that. Okay. Uh, we will say that since, I mean, uh, Mali has been in, I mean, this situation, uh, Burkina, you know, is a neighboring country and it was very close to, to Mali, and it was quite sure that, you know, we are sharing the same, I mean, uh, our friends and with, I mean, uh, let's say, uh, the different frontiers that are very, uh, let's say, uh, you know, open from, I mean, Burkina to Mali, and uh, we know that these uh, terrorist groups, uh, they can jump from frontier to frontier. And this was, I mean, uh, the first witnesses. And after we know that in 2014, uh, there was, I mean, uh, a popular, um, let's say, uh, insurrection that's happening in our country. And we know that before that, there was, I mean, uh, a sort of, I mean, a presidential, you know, what, what we call the RSP in French here, uh, that were, let's say, um, uh, uh, removed. And from that moment, we say that uh, we are not saying that this um, security, a uh, presidential security guard, is the the only one that can, let's say, protect the country. But it contributed a lot, you know, to uh, the situation that we are, let's say, experiencing today. Uh, so from that time, you know, the first um, terrorist attack, you know, uh, you know, appeared in Burkina Faso, and we are not able to, you know, bring a quick response. And um, the different government from the regime of uh, Kabore. And then uh, the, with uh, Damiba, they were not able, really, let's say, to uh, reverse the trend. And this is what we are still experiencing because, you know, at the beginning, you know, we tried to, let's say, uh, deny the phenomenon, uh, accusing the, the former regime. But with time going on, we have noticed that, you know, these, I mean, uh, are small judges groups that were, let's say, not a lot at the beginning. Um, that were, let's say, from the very beginning coming from, I mean, the, uh, the foreign countries, I mean, the neighboring countries mm -hmm. have succeeded in having, let's say, in Burkina, and many others, you know, people that adhere to their ideology.
Now, Kualaga, uh, just on, can, can, can you hold your thoughts for a second? I would like to interrupt yeah. you for a moment there. When I was speaking to Dr. Rodrago earlier, he did mention that the road from uh, Wagadugu to Burkina Faso's second city, the economic uh, capital, Bobo Diolasso, is not so safe. So is this violence restricted to the, north, uh, to the northern part of Burkina Faso, or has it taken another dimension? Yeah, violence now, as I was saying, that at the beginning it was only two or three regions, but now today we have um, 10 regions out of 13 regions, except uh, the central region and the uh, central west region, and um, I mean the, the south central, the other region of the country is, you know, experiencing this uh, uh, extremist, uh, violent extremism. So we say that uh, very quickly that today, the threat is spread everywhere, and uh, let's say it, it is today, you know, very, very difficult, you know, to, you know, move from one area to, you know, to another, and not uh, suspecting maybe this, um, I mean, uh, terrorists, you know, to, you know, uh, you know, attack people, and this is um, a bringing about, I mean, a lot of people also, you know, that uh, let's say running from one area to another, and that has increased a lot. I mean. Uh, at this humanitarian uh, you know, situation in the country. So briefly, I will say that uh, from uh, two regions or three regions, today we have more than 10 regions out of 13. That's to show that you know, today the violent, extreme violence is already present and the worst thing in the book in our past. Okay, thank you very much, Kolaga. It's a fine place to go on a break. Uh, when we return on Secure the Continent, we will be looking at the implication of uh, this violence on the country and the sub-region. We would also be preferring solutions uh, to some of these issues in the role of ECOWAS and other uh, multilateral organizations and finding a permanent uh, solution to the problems of insecurity in Burkina Faso. You're watching Secure the Continent here on New Central Television. We'll be right back after this break. If you're just joining us, you're watching Secure the Continent, a new central television. We've been discussing the recent military coup in Burkina Faso and its security implications uh, for Burkina Faso and the Sahel. And I still have with me uh, from the capital of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, uh, Koala Umarupo and Dr. Uh, Lassan Wadurago. Now, Dr. Wadurago, uh, before we went on this uh, break, uh, Kolaga did give us a brief uh, understanding of who uh, of these jihadist groups and how they came to be. But who are these groups responsible for the attacks on government forces and civilians in Burkina Faso? And do these groups enjoy support from the local population? We must uh, say clearly that these groups do not enjoy local support in Burkina, although... So they how, have how have they been formidable opponents to the, to the military? Who's funding them? Have they been resolute? They, it, it's, it's really hard to say who is funding them, but uh, in zones that they have occupied, we know that uh, they do control uh, the exploitation of uh, artisanal gold mining, for example, and uh, they do also... Um, uh, still cattle, cattle from uh, from the village people and and so on. 
So it is really hard to say where is funding coming from these, uh, in, in support of these uh, groups who are operating in Burkina Faso. Um, but one thing that uh, is quite uh, interesting to observe from the way they operate is that they do not really seek to um, control a region, establish laws and uh, leadership and settle. And most of the time when they show up in a village or a small town, the first thing they do is go after the police, go after the schools, go after any symbol of, the, of, the, of the state. And uh, any resistance from the locals is just met with utmost violence. Um, so a lot of locals have also been recruited to join um, these groups. So most of the people who are fighting in those terrorist cells are not outsiders. They are Burkina Bays. There are people from Burkina Faso who have decided to join um, uh, th those groups. Although we can also say that in some areas, people didn't have a choice but to join uh, because the state was not really, really present to some extent. Now, we've had the G5 Sahel, the operation to Cuba. Uh, the, also, it's, even the French have a, a, ba a military base in Ouagadougou. It's been about seven or ten years now. Why haven't they been able to stem the tide of this insurgency? So if, if you go back to 2014, when uh, uh, Blaise Compaore was ousted through a popular coup, and uh, Jinjiri staged a uh, uh, coup to, to reverse, um, uh, to, to take down the transitional government. Of course, he failed. But when President Kabori got elected, he spent a lot of years blaming uh, folks from uh, Compaore's regime mm -hmm. for being the, the guys behind, uh, behind this phenomenon. And to some extent, he's not totally wrong because during his last... Uh, five years, President Blaise Compaore has worked alongside with his, some of his, uh, uh, some of the leaders of his organizations in, in terms of negotiating peace in Mali, negotiating peace in Niger, negotiating peace in Mauritania. So while Blaise Compaore was in power, they did not attack Burkina Faso. But at the same time, they were present. They could uh, easily um, um, uh, enter into Burkina Bay territory without... So it was um, sort of yeah. a graveyard peace and a negotiated settlement uh, be between Blaise Kampari's government and this terrorist. And once he left office, it was open season for them. Absolutely. When he left, when he left um, and uh, the, the circumstances also led to the dismembering of uh, our elite army units, which was supposedly the, 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 the elite unit that was working on intelligence and working um, in terms of finding intelligence to fight against terrorism. So when that group got disband disbanded, it further weakened our positions. And for the first five years of uh, his first term, President Kabore had not really taken this threat seriously. He has kept blaming uh, the regime, the compiler regime. Mm -hmm. He had uh, not really put the necessary means in the hands of, a, uh, of, a, of the army. And that what led to his own demise. Okay, um, let me bring in uh, Ko Lager here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wadaraga. Now, Ko Lager, Captain Brian Traore, let's talk about present-day realities in Burkina Faso. Uh, the head of the junta, Captain Brian Traore, has said he will respect the democratic transition timeline agreed between his predecessor and ECOWAS, which is to restore civilian rule by July 2024. Looking at today's present-day realities, uh, the security situation in Burkina Faso, is that enough time to address the security challenges in the country? And uh, why the, for lack of a better word, obsession uh, with elections? Uh, do, will you have elections in a country where that is not secured? And what's the guarantee that by July 2024, uh, Burkina Faso will be safe uh, for elections to be conducted? Yeah, I think one of I mean, um, the agreement that with the country as with I mean, uh, ECOWAS uh, is, let's say, to held elections you know, by July 2024. This is something that they are, let's say, uh, 
um, they said it and they renewed it and announced it once again, you know, to the the new, I um, mean, you know, the new president, uh, Captain Traore, and he um, himself, you know, uh, admitted that and uh, recognized that this is something that should be respected. Uh, he even said that it maybe it's maybe a less than what you know they have agreed that it's maybe uh, even before July 2024. But we know that, I mean, uh, the security issue today in the country is something is, that is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, very dynamic. And things may not be, let's say, uh, which is our wish that it should be improved. But it may happen that, you know, things may not go, I mean, in the, the, the right way. Uh, in this case, you know, it's uh, uh, too legitimate, you know, to question ourselves if... Um, uh, these elections that normally should be, you know, organized by July 24, uh, should be uh, or will be, uh, let's say, uh, be able to to be organized. You know, to this question, I would say that uh, what we are asking to the to the regime, even with uh, Damiba, mm. it is not to totally, you know, have you know full security, but you know, just have, you know, let's say, uh, things, you know, being maybe improved, and have a new um, president, a civilian. Uh, so that, let's say, uh, this new president that will come after the elections, you know, will continue with the process. We are not expecting, you know, his uh, security, you know, to be, let's say, uh, recovered in all the territory or in the majority of the country. This is something that we all know. Uh, what we are expecting is just to see things, you know, you know, improving or reversing step by step, and then, you know, uh, to allow to have, I mean, this election. Because if we do not have election, the problem is when we're speaking about ECOWAS is we are today are not part of the organization. Even if we do not have, you know, sanction like, you know, country like Mali or Guinea, uh, the, the, the issue is that to, if, if you are not, I mean, um, coming back to this constitutional order, you know, many partnership with others, you know, countries, uh, we take the example of, I mean, uh, the United States, uh, Canada, and others, you know, strong partners. Uh, many projects that, let's say, were, let's say, conducted with, I mean, these are, you know, uh, countries, okay. in, to a certain extent, are not really, you know, uh, they, are, they are suspended, or let's say, uh, sometimes some of them are cancelled. And this is not good for the populations. Uh, that, in, in addition to these security issues, are also, you know, having some uh, challenges with, I mean, uh, development project. This is why, uh, this is the reason why we should try our best, you know, to, you know, respect, I mean, this agreement and to, uh, let's say, I know these are many challenges, but we should, you know, go back very quickly to these uh, constitutional orders. And the new elected civilian president uh, will take, I mean, the, I mean, the, the country leadership uh, will continue the process with the, the support and the uh, with the other partners, uh, including the powers. Thank you, uh, Kolaga. Dr. Odrago, as we begin to wrap things up uh, on this program, according to a recent United Nations report, almost one in every four people in Burkina Faso, a country of 20 million, needs urgent humanitarian assistance. What are some of the humanitarian effects of this conflict on the people of Burkina Faso? And what are some of the consequences of not dealing uh, and addressing this violence in Burkina Faso if it continues to worsen? Well, one of the uh, dire consequences that will impact us for years to come is the fact that a lot of schools are closed and a lot of children from families that are internally displaced do not have access to school. And uh, they, that is going to continue to impact the country in years to come. And uh, even if we were to secure the country today, that impact is already there. So it is, it is vital for our international partners to perhaps exceptionally um, think about the people of Burkina Faso and not impose very strong and harsh punishment to this regime, but instead support them to fight and, and, uh, and bring back security and bring Burkina Bay back to the, um, to, the, to the towns and cities. 
And one of the one of the, the implications also is that most of the people who are internally displaced are our brave uh, farmers. Hmm. So if two million or uh, over two million people are not able to farm, in the, the food coming security years, implications of that food security is is pretty much um, a, 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 a major issue already. Uh, today, the, the price of staple food has almost triple in, in, a, in a less than two years. So, and this year, a lot of people have not been able to farm, including in areas where the security level is not so high, but uh, Damiba had urged people to move out of those zones so that we can strike. And people have not been farming in those zones. Mm. And we know that the terrorists, the jihadists, also burn down crops. So in areas where people have been able to farm, it's vital for the new regime to run in and secure those zones so that we can have more crops um, uh, in the next months, in the coming months. Um, okay, so thank you. those are two major concerns that I see beyond the present short-term implications of, uh, of the conflict for the country. Thank you, Dr. Wadraga. I'd like uh, Kualaga to have the final say, if you can, in less than a minute. Quickly, as we end our conversation, what should be the best approach to ending this conflict? In less than a minute, please. Now, I think that um, this is uh, taking from, I mean, uh, the lesson learned uh, from what, you know, we experienced this, I mean, uh, uh, a month ago, uh, was the fact that the President Damiba was, let's say, um, I would not say uh, neglecting, I mean, security issues, but he was, let's say, also handling with other issues like, I mean, uh, uh, reconciliation and uh, with some, you know, um, let's say, uh, uh, strategies that some people were really, you know, uh, knowing that he was, uh, he has developed, I mean, political ambitions. Now, from these regimes, what should be uh, done to avoid, I mean, uh, um, coming back to the starting point, it is focus on, I mean, uh, security issues. This is uh, the main, uh, I mean, the, 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 the main important issue for me. And then uh, work to reduce the number of internal uh, people and succeed in um, having, you know, less regions that are, let's say, uh, involved, I mean, in these uh, security okay. uh, challenges. And then prepare at the same time, and let's say, you know, or in a, uh, ending back, I mean, the, the power to, I mean, as civilian support that we should okay. you know, prepare ourselves to, I mean, uh, coming election. Thank you very much, uh, Koalaga Umaru Paul and Dr. Lassan Wadrago for being a part of today's conversation. I do appreciate your insights, your time and your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Now, beyond the need to pursue and improve the military response and the growing insecurity in Burkina Faso, the new government of Captain Ibrahim Traore should ensure that their actions do not undermine social cohesion and national reconciliation. In particular, the mobilization efforts should be accompanied by increased support for local approaches to dialogue. On behalf of the team and I, say a big thank you to you all for watching Secure the Continent. Uh, join me same time next week for another edition. I am Benga Aborowa. Bye-bye.